Today we're going to be taking a look at Rimsky-Korsakov's Scheherazade. This is a piece that I grew up with for a very long time. I used to have an old audio book that would say, turn the page, and you'd hear this kind of written story. So I know this piece really well, but what I wanted to do specifically today is take a look at 12 measures from the first movement, the scene Sinbad's ship, and actually not just score study, but mock it up. This process of score studying and then making a mock-up is exactly how I actually have improved in my own personal orchestration, and so I thought it'd be good to actually showcase that to you all. Honestly, I was actually just going to do this myself on my own time, but I thought that recording a video might be informative and helpful, so I hope you do find this process helpful. And the MIDI for this is going to be available on my Patreon, so if you want to support the channel and check out that MIDI, then you can check that out in the description. So here's the score for the first six measures that we're going to check out, and then I'll show you the next six measures afterwards. I'm not actually going to play the audio for this piece because I'll get a copyright claim, so instead I'm going to play it on the piano for you all uh, to the best of my abilities. If you're not familiar with the piece, the main melody goes a little something like this. That's the basic idea for the first um, six measures of this, this piece. Now let's take a look at the orchestration of what's actually happening, and that'll sort of inform uh, the mock-up and what we can learn from this. So let's start by looking at the strings because they're the most active. So we've got this pedal point bass, pedal point meaning it's just sustaining. And we have the cellos that are playing this arpeggiated pattern. Now the basses are actually an octave down, so we really have this extra low sustain zone. Okay, now to accompany that we have violas. These violas are actually playing an echoed version of that pattern, and that gives us this kind of cascading effect, but pay special attention to when they're actually active. Now they drop. And they pick up. What they're doing here is they're leaving space for the melody. Because if you notice, the melody... is awfully low, and that would interfere with the viola's register. We want to clear out that space. So, all together... That covers our strings. Now let's take a look at what the other instruments are doing. We don't have anything else after this sustained passage except for, this is clarinets and bassoons. Clarinets and bassoons make a really nice blend together, it's kind of low register. So we have bassoons. It's pretty darn low, but it's basically blending with the celli because the celli are doing this arpeggiated pattern. And so the bassoons are sustaining to hold that through. It's almost like if we had the sustain pedal activated on the piano, which we do in this case. Then we have the clarinets. And then they drop. So they're basically just doubling the melody without all the ornamentation. So altogether, bassoons and clarinet. Now, let's start by mocking this up, and then we're going to go through the next six measures to see how the orchestration has changed. So here's my logic template, and I've got loaded up my strings, and currently the horns, which are going to come in later, and the woodwinds. One thing that I'll note that I try to do when I'm making these mock-ups uh, for score study is I try to study them and then actually memorize this. So I'm not going to work off of the score. I'm going to work off my memory and what I remember each instrument was doing. And if I forget or need to reference, then of course I'm going to do that at the end. So let's see what I can do from memory. I remember the basses. We're sustaining that low note, so let's start off by just grabbing that, because that should be easy enough. Now let's go to the cellos. The cellos are doing that arpeggiated pattern.
Okay, now the violas. Next, we're going to do the violins, and I think the violins were playing in unison, so I'm going to play in with the marcato patch because I want this to be a bit more aggressive. Okay, now I kind of changed my mind for mock-up purposes, so let's actually pop this over to the legatos because this is just a bit thin sounding and not very expressive. So I'm gonna pull it over to Legato's. And then on top of that, I'm gonna actually uh, sub out that little trill I did with a real trill. Here's the real trill. And then on top of that, let's also get that staccato. Bum, bum. Let's see how that all sounds. So this should be all the strings. Just about there, got to tweak that legato at the end. Now part of the reason why I'm working so quickly and why this is uh, coming up quickly is because of my template and ways that I've optimized it. Um, but it doesn't really matter how realistic it is. The, the, the important thing is that you're getting the practice of inputting this into your DAW. Now let's move on to the bassoons and the clarinet. I'm going to just use sustain patches. I don't have to worry about legato because it's buried. Okay, no, I gotta fix that note in the middle. And the clarinets, again, sustain patch. Okay, so let's double check those woodwinds. Okay, so we have a good picture now of these instruments all together. Well, again, one more time all together so you can hear it. Okay, now let's move on to the second section, which again is the same passage orchestrated a bit larger. Now this is really important because Knowing how to orchestrate the same thing multiple ways is incredibly useful as a film composer. It helps you kind of take the same melody maybe you're working with or a theme and expand on it or maybe diminish it if you need to. It's a very powerful tool. So let's talk about that a little bit right after I save. All right, so here we are. And now you'll notice that everything's a bit more active here. So we've got these strings. We still have this pattern going on in the celli and the violas now, uh, kind of doubling that an octave higher. The strings are still playing the melody, but they're an octave higher as well. And so that's adding all of this extra weight. Really, the strings are almost doing the same thing, just an octave higher. The difference is we have now, oboe and clarinet have taken over the woodwinds. And oboe and clarinet are essentially playing the melody as well as some extra harmony on the bottom. So the first oboe and clarinet playing the melody, second oboe and clarinet playing the harmony. The other addition we have is the horns. The horns are adding some support in this mid register because you notice we've lost those bassoons, and we've also lost the support of the violas because they are now accompanying the celli in the lower register. Horns are a great way to kind of mix textures. They work very well with strings, they work well with brass, obviously, and they work well with winds. So they're kind of a nice background texture when they need to be, although of course horns can also be super present. Notice also that the horns are playing piano, whereas the strings are playing forte to really stick out, and the winds are playing uh, forte for the melody and then mezzo forte for these extra harmonies. Now, in film score writing, when you're writing for film music, that amount of dynamics on one measure is not very common. In my experience, I've seen one dynamic all the way through, maybe two if you want something to stick back. For film scoring practices, they know how to balance and blend. This is more of a classical kind of orchestration and uh, treatment in terms of uh, score. So let's play through what everybody's doing. We've got the woodwinds together playing. Okay, pretty straightforward. We have the bass, again, in the low register playing. And we have the cello, just like before. But now we have the violas accompanying.
actually here, look. So there they actually move up because it's too much doubling of that third, so we don't need that. Okay, we have the violins uh, pretty straightforward other than that giant, you know, stop in the beginning that... So they're playing actually just all one octave. Now for those stops, I'm already thinking about my mock-up. What I'm probably going to do is have that as a separate articulation because to blend that with the legatos is very challenging, especially if it's just a, a true legato patch where you can only work with one voice. And then for the horns, let's see those harmonies. I'm transposing on the fly, so you'll have to forgive me if I'm a little slower with it, but they're playing this for our opening chord, and then I would imagine they're playing. Mm -hmm. Nice kind of Russian chord here. So it's actually very similar to what was happening with the clarinets, and it's almost like the bassoons that were before that. It just pushed up the octave. So when you're orchestrating different things, sometimes it's as simple as changing the registers and then determining what instruments you need to compensate for that. So volume on the piano can be compensated by layering instruments in the orchestra or by changing the instrumentation. And if you change the register, then you in turn get a louder or softer sound. So let's see if I have all of that memorized. So I'm just gonna save time by moving the cello and the bass because I know that the basses are gonna be just up the octave for this. And I know that the violas are gonna be doing exactly what the cello is doing, except for up an octave. And that last note, as we talked about, is an F sharp. So see how I'm trying to save time by doing this? I also know that the violins are doing the exact same thing, except for they're also gonna be up an octave. Now let's get those double stops in there. So I'm gonna use a staccato patch, perhaps, maybe even sforzando, let's see. So I think it would be, that should work. Okay, not gonna quantize that. And we also need to make all these dynamics louder, right? Let's actually even pull uh, these to the marcato patches now because I want them to be very kind of articulate. And we're gonna take those uh, attacks. That's gotta be much, much quieter. Okay, not too bad. Let's change this to the sforzando. Let's see if it, what happens if it's a little bit less uh, attacking. So. You see the difference? Now let's move on to the horns because we didn't do the horns yet. It's just a sustain patch should do. Remember they were piano, so we gotta play that nice and quiet. And then lastly, we should be able to do the clarinets and the oboes at the same time because they're playing the same thing. So let's do the sustain. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's change that ending, bump, bump, to be staccato to support that feeling, bump, bump. Now with these patches, I tend to actually have to use staccatissimo because it just has a bit more bite to it. Now let's compare our two passages to see how the orchestrations change the feeling. Okay, and then the second one. So very similar in terms of their orchestration, what's slightly different is the register and how different instruments have leaned in to support it. Now the next step that I would do if I was practicing for myself and I wanted to improve is I would try and memorize this orchestration again and utilize it in my own piece. So let's actually do a quick version of that just to demonstrate. I'm gonna come up with a piece that's relatively similar. It's gotta be similar enough, otherwise it's not gonna work. Let's do um, something maybe in G minor. Something like that should work. It's pretty similar. So let's just record a piano sketch to get it down.
Okay, that's just a placeholder. Now let's just jump to save time into that second orchestration so we can get right to it and just get that full sound. So we're gonna start with the violins. Okay, I'm not even gonna worry about the ornamentation. We're just gonna leave it as is for now. Now let's get the viola, which would be up here. Notice we're going to have a bit of interference here because we're going to have that melody here, but we're going to have the viola here. So that's going to be a problem already. So let's change that slightly. Let's maybe do... Something like that. Okay, for speed's sake, let's transfer that directly over to the cello, potentially. Might have to change a few notes. So what I did to compensate for that, I didn't really like how it sat in the low register, so instead I changed the voicing again. So it's sort of like that ending passage of the first section of the orchestration, where we have a bit of harmony going on in the violas and the cello. That's me just making up for the change in register that we've done from this previous orchestration. Now, the basses, let's have them do something similar. So they basically just did a sustain the whole way through. Next, let's, let's have the horns. So let's see how we have to change those voicings. <laughs> Ow. Something like that, potentially. We could also move lower if we wanted to. Let's maybe try that one. Potentially. And lastly, we got to do the woodwinds. Now, I noticed that this is awfully low for the oboes and the clarinets. So we're going to mix and match. This time, we're going to use the orchestration from the first part, which is going to be the clarinets and the bassoons. There's already going to be a lot of support from the horns in that register, so we'll see how this interacts, but we'll give it a try. That's the clarinets, and then the bassoons. Let's hear the woodwinds and the horns all together. So, the horns aren't very present, and I'd like them to be a bit more present, so I'm going to actually bump them up the octave, which is my hunch. So notice the horns are carrying a little bit more weight in that register, and I think it just works better. Again, you can kind of cross-check by using your piano roll if you want to double-check, make sure everything's working. And there you have it. Now, what's really cool is I know, just by demonstrating this to you all, I've got this orchestration memorized. I went through the steps, I studied it, I implemented it by just making the mock-up, and then I implemented it into an original composition. And if you go through those steps, those three steps, I can guarantee you, you're gonna internalize the things you study so, so much better. So I highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to study the MIDI for this, like I said, it's in the description, and everybody who supports me on Patreon uh, is a huge, huge help in helping me to continue to make this content on this channel. So thank you all so much for your support. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. If you're not subscribed already, I hope you will subscribe uh, because I do these videos every week, and I hope to see you in the next video. Although I guess I won't see you. So, bye. <laughs>